For the past few months, I've been teaching myself 3D game development, and it is one of the hardest things I've had to learn in my entire life. Look, this is my attempt at making a pigeon. This is not a happy creature. The problem with learning 3D stuff is that it's not just like one singular skill, right? It's a collection of about 20 different skills, and you really need to understand all of them to make any progress whatsoever. And even when you do kind of start to pick up these skills, it feels like there's always something getting in the way. Here's an example. Say you finally do make something that looks cool in Blender. You feel like you should be able to just pop it out of Blender and put it into your game development software, right? Absolutely not, and you were dumb for thinking that you could. Instead, there's an elaborate process where you manually go through every layer and select specific pieces of them in the right order so that you can merge them all into one single file. It takes like five minutes, and if you mess up a single step, you gotta do it over. And you might say like, wow, that's a lot of work. It'd be really nice if there was one button that did all that work for you. And the thing is, that button does exist. You can buy it for 20 bucks, it's an add-on. But like, why doesn't Blender just come with that already? And here's another thing. Once I finished a model, I wanted to paint it, right? Just apply some color, make it look nice. So I look up how to do texture painting in Blender, and all of the results say Blender is really not that good for texture painting. You need a separate program for this part of the process. And it turns out like the best software out there that was the industry standard for a long time, it got bought up by Adobe and now it costs $50 a month as a subscription service. And that's kind of been this whole experience, right? It's not just learning the technical skills that's hard, it's navigating this entire landscape of different programs and software, it's been a challenge just to figure out where to get started. And then on top of all of that, here's a new problem. I realized I straight up don't know how to do 3D math. For my entire life, math has existed on an X and Y axis. I'm not like bad at math, I'm pretty decent at math, but I don't know what class I would have needed to take before I learned about the Z axis. Like I'm trying to think, did I just like miss something in 10th grade? Was there like a section or is that like an advanced like college thing that I didn't take because I was a film major? I'd like like to blame it on my education, but thinking back, like, oh man, I, I don't even remember the film stuff. Like, why is Casablanca a good movie? I don't remember. When you're making 2D games, the math is really understandable. It's all just like, angles, sine, cosine, tangent, hypotenuse, right? Like it's it's triangles. It's fine. It's I'm I'm moving on. I am learning. It's just going to take me a minute to nail it down. Okay, but putting all of that aside, I've been having a lot of fun learning 3D and I'm really excited about the stuff I'm working on. So let me show you some of the cool stuff that I've been making. I first started learning Blender by watching the classic donut tutorial on YouTube. A lot of people who learn Blender start out with this tutorial because it's very beginner friendly and I had never even opened up a 3D modeling software before this, so I needed to start at the very beginning. After that, I just spent some time messing around in Blender, making some simple stuff, like the simple sword, some low poly animals, I got the frog guy, I got the little pigeon, I got the sad hamster. And from this point, I kind of felt like I had the basics enough to start working on my first 3D game. So that was the next project. I didn't want to make a character with a lot of really complicated animations, like running, walking, jumping, all that kind of stuff. So I had this idea to make sort of a super monkey ball style game, you know, with the monkey trapped in the ball. Is the monkey trapped in the ball or does he choose to be in the ball? So I made this cool little wizard character I do really like him. I don't have a sense for how many polygons a character should have. I know that plays a big part in the game's performance, so I just tried to keep it as low as I could while still making him look good, and I think it kind of worked. But after I finished up the wizard and his orb, the game kind of just naturally became a bowling game, you know, as games often do. So I added these pins, I added a lane, and uh, the scary face, and it all kind of came together. But at this point I was feeling pretty confident in my abilities, so I was ready to move on to the next big thing. So I've decided that the next game that I'm going to publish as Sketchy Games is going to be a 3D space flight sim called Rabble Rousers. It's gonna be such a fun game, and I'm so excited for it. The prototype that I made is already so good. The basic hook for the game is if that one scene from Star Wars was an entire game all on its own. The next video that I make on this channel is gonna be all about Rabble Rousers, and it's gonna be really awesome, uh, but it's been kind of a weird time for sketchy games. For the last few months, my focus has really been on learning 3D, so I haven't been making as many videos. But cool stuff is on the way. I'm really excited for what's coming, and thank you for sticking around. I'll see you around next time. Bye.